Many parents at this time want to know, how do I talk to my kids about the current situation? Here's some guidelines. Ages two to three. By this age, small children know what it means to get ill, to stop them spreading the virus around. That is like a bit bad cold, but most people will get better. Make it into a game of germ blusters. Tell them that even though they cannot see them, they can still catch and get rid of bugs by seizing in their elbow and washing their hands or singing their favourite song. If they ask why some adults are wearing masks, we show them it's to make sure they do not catch the germs too. Ages four to five, your children will know. Now have picked up. There is an illness adults are worrying about. And they say kids have been also keen to know how the world works and will ask as many as 70 questions an hour. Stay patient and keep answering the most their queries about the virus. Read the most authoritative resources information so they can answer calmly until their curiosity is satisfied. You'll be taking the, they'll be taking the cues for you. Ages 6 to 7. Kids now understand the concept of death and will be have concerns about losing, about losing loved ones. Although at this stage they do not believe this is something that will happen to them. Give them reassurance. You are taking good care of yourself. And you expect to live until you're old and they are grown-ups themselves. Ages 8 to 9. There's a period when kids have formed themselves into firmer friendship groups so they may be more anxious about missing out on the play dates. Remind them everyone is in the same boat. Any parties they are looking forward to will be delayed until later in the year. It will give them something to look forward to. Tell them that they can still have screen play dates, but as children do not yet have the conversation skills for long, phone conversations suggest a 10 minute play date once a day. Ages 10 to 11. At this age, children are developing the ability to see the bigger picture. This means fantasy fears about witches and monsters be replaced by their real fears about their own safety. Be on the lookout for times when your children, child wants to talk. Listen to more than you, you talk and do not dismiss them. Show that you are really paying attention by summarising worries back to them so you know you have understood. At times when you are not so anxious, talk about scientists, healthcare professionals and government bodies throughout the world united to fight this. Ages 12 to 13, peers feel it's impo- as important as family as they become more important. They may feel angry when they're kept apart from their mates and think grown-ups are putting and actually controls them. Keep talking about the scientific reasons about for sci-fi isolation and be, under- and be understanding about their need to keep in touch with friends via apps like house party or group FaceTime calls. Ages 14 to 15. Around this age, teenagers are more cynical than their adult authority. They may believe coronavirus is a media scare or talk about conspiracy theories. I may even appear gun ho about it because adolescents create a personal fable which tells them they are special and immune from threats. Work with your teen to sort out the facts from fiction and seek answers to their questions together. Ages 16 to 18. Children are now thinking more about the future, but increasingly worrying about the effect coronavirus will have on things like exams. They will also be stressed out or, or angry that they are facing an uncertainty that can, they did not create. Examin explain that everyone is in a peer group is facing the same disruption. The teachers, the examples and the government are working out the best way forward. Possibility to be extending the exam season. Keep them focused on the future after the flow outbreak is brought under control and talk through how there is still a lot they can do at home, such as online learning to keep 